Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Metherium, a cooperative fantasy tabletop game. This game plays between one and five players, but it's meant for four, and it takes roughly three to six hours, ages 12, 12 and up. And in the game Ethereum, you are playing as one of many classes. You're going through a dungeon and you're attempting to fight the final boss in the quest room. The quest room is kind of off to the side and you're going to be getting a four by five grid uh, that kind of makes up the dungeon you're going to go through. There's multiple parts to this game. You'll be venturing into the city at the beginning of the game, gathering supplies and what you need. There's character creation to start off your journey. And then when you get into the dungeon, you're going to be facing Facing dangers, danger cards, end game cards. You're going to be facing different types of monsters based on your level, and you're also going to have events as well as room features that you'll be seeing throughout the game. And the game is played fairly simply, but there's a lot to it. This is kind of a mixture between D and D or any type of TTRPG and a tabletop board game. The character creation is quite simple and unique all at the same time. There is a free rendered ones you can choose from the book or you can kind of customize your own and you can start pretty much on any level that you'd like and you can push yourself forward and use different difficulties. Will you be able to get to the end, complete the final challenge and move on? Or will your characters be lost in darkness or defeated in combat? Find out in the game Metherian. Let's take a look at the basic idea of how to set the game up, an idea of how to play because it is rather large and then we'll talk about my review for the game. So when looking at a game like Metherian, the first thing I always take a look at is character creation slash customization and as you see you're going to be provided with paper that you're going to be able to utilize to create and customize your own character. Now me being more of a novice at this type of a thing so I generally just play mainly tabletop board games and this one's kind of a mix in between which is why I'm into it. Uh, you are going to be selecting from one of the pre-rendered characters in the booklets. There are many booklets in the game. You're going to have the treasure tome which teaches you about all the different treasures you can gather as you go and complete your quests and hopefully you'll get them in the game. Uh, you're going to have the core rulebook of healing Heroes. This details all the different heroes in the game and what you can choose and how you can customize them. Uh, the Metherian Core Realm Book, which explains different events that can happen in Terraria as well as story. And of course, you're going to have a Goblin Skull, Keep, uh, Skull Keeps of Burnhe. This is the adventure setting. And this is all the, the things that can happen in the game as well as I believe mainly it's a lot of story as well. So it's like story mixed in with like events that you're going to have to deal with as you roll dice. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to look at is the core book of heroes. This is going to help you detail the characters that you're going to pick. And there are a multitude of different characters you can choose from, like a Selenite warrior, or maybe a sorcerer. You could choose to play as an elf or dwarf, etc., etc., and uh, or a Viking. And uh, basically, they're going to give you all the base stats. It'll tell you all the base stats at the top. It will tell you the different types of weapons you're going to have and armor and items, as well as you'll be able to choose a certain number of skills. There's going to be utility and combat and defense skills that you can choose from, and they help you out throughout your journey. And they're all very, very simple as to how they function. Even if you don't understand the game to begin with, you can set up a character. You can pick your skills. You can write down on your piece of paper what you're going to start with, and uh, you're ready to go. Now, every character will get 30 six provisions and five torches and torches are what you need to light the way throughout the dungeons they're going to go through because if you don't have a torch and you're by yourself then you can be lost in darkness you'll be making a lot of skill checks in this game another thing to note about this main game mainly for the setup is you're going to be needing your own dice it's going to um, require a lot of d6 for the game but I suggest having a variety of dice because you're going to need them for all sorts of things it might be what type of event you're going to have to deal with it might be a d20 for the different types of of rooms and where you're gonna to have to try and find your quest room and then you're going to have a variety of dice for other things there's like danger dice and like your combat die that you're gonna have that set the pace of the game when monsters are going to spawn or when the intensity of combat is going to raise so like I said just have them ready and available every character is also gonna start with a d6 that is going to detail their wounds and how many they start with they're gonna to to start with six HP they can take six wounds and that will remove them from the game most likely or possibly I should say Otherwise, at the end of combat, as long as somebody's alive, you can come back. So after you've got your character all sorted with your core rulebook of heroes, then all you're going to really need for the game is the core rules. The core rules will detail what you're going to do throughout the game. And there's a lot of page turning in this, especially at the very beginning, and especially 
especially if you haven't played a tabletop RPG before. You'll go through the introduction, the storytelling, the different books and the components of the game. It'll go through the game setup and in the game setup you're going to have a five by four grid of these tiles and it'll tell you which ones you can flip over and how you flip them over. It'll also have you set up decks and events. You'll shuffle the event deck. You will have a certain number of these room features. So based on whenever you meet a room that's an R, you'll have these things flip over. So you'll have 12 of them. You'll have two different danger decks, the end of game one and the basic one. The basic one is just gonna have numbers on it and the end of game one is going to have letters along with one special card that is called the Horn of Doom or Horns of Doom and that will trigger the end game if you haven't completed your objective by then. You'll also be rolling dice, a d20, to determine where the quest room is going to be and like how many rooms you need to open in order for you to be able to find the room. So if you find it too early, you'll have to re-roll a new one. So um, they always say to just start with, I believe, eight or nine. Nine is your BST. That's, so that's how many of these tiles you have to flip over before you can actually find the room you need to go to in order to open it up and hopefully defeat the enemies and win the encounter. Um, that being said, you would also need, additionally, any characters you'd like to use in the game. I went ahead and just selected some of my favorite miniatures from one of my favorite games, and you can do so as well. You can use any type of D&D type miniatures or characters from board games, or if you're even out of those, you can find some unique miniatures <laughs> that you can use as well. Maybe preferably with bases that are one by one inch, other than these guys here, but yeah, these are super cool. And of course, you're also gonna need some enemies. Uh, enemies do not come in the game. They're all detailed and described. You can use tokens or markers or use paper and you can write those guys down. Or if you wanna get creative, you can find your own enemies around the house. Maybe not this one also, too big of a base. <laughs> but you get your idea. Uh, and you're also gonna have these enemies are gonna be groups of enemies as well. So when, when you draw cards from your deck of enemies, which are all gonna be based on the level of the heroes, it's like you're, the average level of heroes, those are the type of monsters that you will be dealing with in the game as well. So you got your characters, you've set up your board, you're gonna have a starting point for all your heroes, you're going to have a deck of cards for your enemies, as well as two different types of danger decks, some room features and events, and a ton of dice. Then you're basically ready to go with the game. If this is your first time playing, you can kind of ignore the core realm book. I would still go ahead and look through it and read it to understand it, but you're actually just gonna delve straight into the dungeon. However, if it's not your first game or if you do want to play with it you can you'll be resolving city events um, resolving the mage tide provided that uh, you have any special wizard rules uh, there's supplying your heroes so going around the town and gathering what you need you can stay in the town for a lengthy amount of time and you have to pay money to do so or you'll have to become a beggar on the streets you can resolve borderland events on your way to the adventure setting and then you'll consult the adventure setting book and this that's basically kind of something like you can do your pre slash post game in the cities and towns and whatnot. And then you're gonna go straight into the turn sequence when you have once you have the board set up. There are four main phases of the game. There's movement and actions. Then there's gonna be the exploration phase, which is where you flip over the tiles, provided that you're adjacent to a space that allows you to flip one over. There's gonna be the danger phase, which will involve new mobs potentially popping up and drawing cards from this danger deck. And if you land on a specific space that has a specific number that you drew, you can suffer consequences as well. And then finally, combat intensity. And combat intensity is this die here that starts at one at the beginning of the game, and it can increase, making things a little more difficult for you as you move along. Movement, you're generally gonna be speaking, have like three to four movement, and you'll be moving your character a number of spaces along the grid here. Uh, you're going to also choose instead of movement, you can choose to search. You can search for like open areas, like, or like hidden passages uh, from one space to another if you can't actually get to a space normally that you'd want to go to. Um, and there's a few other little things that you can do as well, but mainly it's gonna be just moving and then of course searching. Uh, you can search for items as well. And there's a grid on one of these booklets that explains like, okay, you rolled this number, this is what you find. And once all heroes have acted, you go to the next phase. So every single character will get their opportunity to move, their number of spaces, uh, or stop and not move and perform some type of search action. And then you'll move on to the exploration phase. Exploration phase is pretty simple. You'll be able to flip over adjacent tiles, always making sure that, that wherever the hero is facing, the number is to the left and the, uh, uh, the letter is to the right of the hero and you'll just simply attach it. So you're gonna be fully constructing this grid as you go along. 
and thusly being able to explore different parts of the dungeon. And if you don't have a hero in a specific area on the dungeon, then it's going to be grayed out. So bam, just like that. Now I have two new locations opened up, provided these two chose to explore. Um, there's also ways to get lost in darkness. If you don't have a torch or you don't happen to have a lit torch at the time and you're by yourself in an area, then you're going to have to roll on a chart and you might wander off into your, your demise. So always have a torch on you or be near someone who does. Uh, the danger phase. Uh, you're going to move the warning. So you roll a little d6. I have a bunch of these little d6s here. You roll d6s after everybody's explored. And based on the roll, you'll be reducing the number on each of your warning die based on what you roll for your d6s. And whenever this warning die goes away, you're going to have to draw one of those cards and there's going to be something that happens. Um, you can you also be rolling for random danger to draw a danger card, one of these guys here, and checking to see what happens when it resolves. Um, and then after that, you'll finalize, finish by combat intensity. In the phase, the heroes suffer from fatigue and the enemies suffer from morale. Um, and it goes through explanations of how combat works. Because whenever you're faced with combat, there's enemies in your area, you're going to be going back and forth and fighting. <laughs> so typically uh, in, in combat with this game for the most part you're going to be rolling these d6 you're going to be checking to see stats the first thing you'll check to see is whether or not you hit then whether or not you penetrate and then based on your weapon which one you choose to use you'll be rolling a set number so in my case I have a 2d6 with my axe with a plus 3 so if I did happen to hit and penetrate I'd roll to wound I'd add up my number, which is 8 to 3, which is going to be 11, and then I'll check the enemy's HP, and I deal damage um, equal to the amount of times the, that, that number can go into that. <laughs> my number can go into theirs. So if it's 5 and I have 10, I would do 2 wounds. And that's how combat works. And So it would be movement, and then heroes attack, enemies attack, and then you check to see about bow attacks. And that's certain requirements there as well. And it'll go back and forth until enemies are either defeated or uh, you are defeated. <laughs> if at least one of you survives, everybody else has a chance to survive. They can come back. You'll be rolling a d6. You'll check to see what your roll is. And based on your roll, you'll come back with a wound or you'll be eliminated. And the way you lose this game is if you're fully eliminated in the game. And that's the basic idea of the game. Now, there's a lot to this game. But for the most part, there are just the four phases. There is combat. There is moving. You're trying to find the quest room. You have to open a certain number of tiles and you're flipping over to constantly find new areas in the game and of course you're going to be utilizing characters or dice or whatever it is you have handy as enemies and as heroes. Um, I'll go into a little bit more of the detail like how the explanation of the gameplay works but that will be with my review but I think for the most part you kind of understand what this is. This is an RPG mixed in with a board game uh, and has a little bit of this thing called the telling as well where you're explaining the story, your backstory, the story that's going on throughout this and so on and so forth. So the first thing I would ask myself about any TTRPG that's mixed with a board game is like, what really is it? Is it a mix of both? Is it more leaning one way or another? And with this one, it's a little bit difficult to say, but I'd probably lean on the TTRPG side. You are going to be rolling dice. You're going to be using the storytelling aspects of the game cooperatively to kind of try, try, try and tell your own story as well as the story of the group as you delve into the dungeon. Everything is kind of laid out for you as well, so you know where you are in the dungeon, where the enemies are, and how they're moving. And there's a certain rules and requirements as to how they move and when they choose, to, when they are going to be attacking you. Different types of weapons and skills and magic and sorcery and all that good stuff that's all mixed into the combat. This is uh, primarily combat based as far as fighting goes, but there is certain sections where it's all just story. And a lot of these books here have a detailed account of the different stories that you're going to be adding to the game to kind of illustrate what it is your adventures are going through. Uh, the fact that you're not using all of the room features means that every time you play, you're going to have new features that pop up when you venture into new rooms. Rooms are marked with R, so as your characters walk into them, you'll be drawing them and certain things will be happening. I'll just go ahead and read one that's not super long. You enter a stone chamber where the two, where the two lowest warnings are fighting each other. Upon your entry, they decide to attack you. All goblins present are minus one wound from the brawling over a pile of treasure. And if you defeat the enemies, you gain an extra 50% gold. Which, as I didn't mention, there are ways you're going to be able to gain treasure other than just searching. A lot of it is gathering gold and using it to buy supplies or when you're in the dungeon and you encounter enemies you'll gain loot as well as gold. 
Uh, that being said, there's other decks you've been drawing from, the Danger deck and, of course, the final deck here. This is like the endgame deck when you end up drawing this last card here, the Horns of Doom. That will trigger the endgame. There's a certain die that you're going to have to represent. It'll start with a six and go to zero. And basically, if you don't escape by that point in time, then a search party will have to come in and rescue you. And you can even still tell your own story there. You can choose to, like, stay and fight it out and brawl to the death, or you can, of course, uh, get rescued and once again, a rinse and repeat the next portion of the game. This character, uh, like, development can be a one-shot. You can simply go in once and tell your story and come out and be done. And once again, at some other point in time, you can play another one-shot. It's also capable of telling a full campaign. You can go in, start in the in the different locations, you can tell the story, You can imp imp there's a lot more impact you can have with the game, and you can progress. And as you progress, you'll be adding new monsters to the deck, and as you can see, uh, this is just a small portion of the monsters you're fighting, but as you get stronger in level and stats and skills, there's more monsters to be added, there's more bosses to encounter, and of course, more quest room slash treasure to be gained or explored. There is a nice quick reference sheet that explains all the basics for not only the types of treasure you can have and the stat checks because you're mainly rolling a d6 for most things and checking your stats. So I need a strength test of seven or five or whatever. I'm going to roll my die, get my plus my stat and see if I succeed. And it also tells you a quick reference as to the four things that happen. Movement, exploring, combat slash danger and combat intensity are all quite simple as to how a, they work, but they can be a bit prolonged. You're going to be trying to tell a story in between these things, explaining what happens, where the enemies move, and cooperatively making the best choices you can with how the enemy is going to be attacking and where they're going to be positioned. There's a lot of text in this game, so if you're mainly a modern gamer, this one might not appeal to you just because there's going to be a lot of rechecking the rules, seeing if you can do a certain thing, when you can cast a spell. Oh, how does this spell exactly work? Uh, my character, for instance, is able to have a bonus to melee weapons and plus one to toughness and also i can ignore gaze and one failed fail, uh, one failed terror check every round um and i also i'm going to be able to ignore fear and so you have to say okay well, does this character have fear or is this something else and how does this exactly work and it's all referenced in here it's all well detailed as to the design of it but there's also a mixed story with rules in these books and that's probably one thing i would suggest a minor change to be make sure that it's focused on rules in certain sections and then story and the element of, of like intrigue and like the, you know, the telling in another section so that's easier I don't have to read like three paragraphs to get to my answer uh, the character sheets are well illustrated you have all the different toughness and speeds and whatnot and fatigue and it's all explained as far as character creation as well I would actually like to see when you do character creation all the stats listed in exactly the same way that you have your sheets so that way I can just simply go down the line and find everything that I need if I want I want it to be fight bow strength agility will I don't want it to be left to right uh, up to down I want it to be exactly as described or even just put a picture up of this specific sheet uh, there's a multitude of different dice I'm wondering uh, if the, in the base game this is kind of what it explains it explains that it has all this stuff here minus the dice and minus the characters I think it would be cool if it included tokens I'd really like to see tokens for the characters and for the like the baddies and the bosses and all that just so that way some people that do not have this stuff do not have to go out of their way to try and find this stuff. Because you're going to be needing these, and you, I, I, personally for me it's not a big deal, but I just imagine it'd be nicer to have these visual aids, or even just aids for markers. Tokens can be a massive, massive benefit for games like this, because it even enriches the story and the visualization for those people that don't have great imaginations like myself. I love the intrigue and the danger. I love the idea that these dice are counting down every round, and as they pop off, new enemies will spawn in different sections and corners of the map. And sometimes there's no way they, they can spawn, so bam, they bust through a door. And when they bust through a door and you defeat them, you can go through that door. That's really cool as well. The danger can ramp up with the danger cards. Sometimes they're gonna pop off, other times, whew, I'm safe. I like that feeling of, is this gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? And how's it gonna happen? And I don't know any of this. It's all kind of like enriched into the storytelling aspect to it. If somebody's playing and they're a DM, they can kind of guide the story and each of the players, including the DM, can kind of tell the story of their characters as well, which is a unique little twist that I haven't seen a lot with games that are kind of like this. Even each of the monsters have their own text at the bottom of each of the character cards. They explain how they work and what they are, as well as a detailed explanation of the characters. Uh, 
which is nice as well. Overall, it's a solid experience. This is a really cool TTRPG mixed in with a tabletop visual presentation so you understand what you're doing and where you're going and how it's working with a ton of story, a ton of depth and detail and customization galore. You are not going to be able to play one game and experience that game again in the same way. It's always going to be different. Even the maps and the terrain and the tiles are going to change based on how the characters are laid out and where they're placed and how many tiles I need to go through. And then the big final baddie boss feels good to fight when you go into that room and you have to deal with the dangers that are presented there. I could gush more about how this game works, but I think you understand the concept. And, and of course, there is in the back of the book exactly how the end of the game works. If you can win, you have to journey home as well. And then the game is officially finished. But if you want, you can tell a tale. You can kind of add on to the next adventure and you can keep going from there and change and customize your hero. Do you like TTRPGs mixed in with a little bit of a board game experience, all with the visuals attached and the ability to customize it? Then Mytherian is something for you. However, it is thick, it is heavy, there's a lot of rules, there is a lot of text. Well, not a lot of rules, but it feels like it because there's so much text going on, you have to flip back and forth. So for some people who are newer to gaming or even basic modern gamers who want to play something like Splendor, this is going to seem like a heavy load of text and understanding the concepts that you might not previously have understood before. And my suggestion is when the playthrough comes out, I suggest you go ahead and look through the playthrough, watch the playthrough and see how it is done. All right, that's pretty much it. Hopefully I gave you a good idea of how to play the game Metharian. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Metharian. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description. It's currently available on Kickstarter, or at least it will be. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you're interested in also going ahead and seeing our live streams, it's every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. On Whatnot, we give away and sell games, and you can join us there and the link down below in the description. It's on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Lastly, my game Zero Day is getting close to being done, and you can learn more on our website as well as unfilteredgames.com, not Unfiltered Gamer, and of course, join our Discord. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, do all that good stuff, push all those buttons. It greatly helps us out. We do greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to delving into the dungeons with you again next time.